Hey guys, I'm going to go over the options you have to make SQL statements. So I'm going to be doing this with JavaScript, but this is going to be general and you can take this for whatever language you're using for your server. So you can just run vanilla SQL statements using something called Node Postgres. Uh, this is a JavaScript library that just lets you run SQL statements. So you can run this. What you can do is, depending on what you know the user asks for, your server can run different queries or uh, execute different delete, update, all those different SQL statements you want to run. And basically you just, just like this, you write out your SQL standard. So this is one way to do it. Um, another way a lot of people do it, and that I'm currently doing it with the project, is using what's called an ORM. Uh, the ORM that I'm using is called SQLize. And an ORM stands for an object relation mapping. And basically what that does is it converts a JavaScript object to a database table and so on. So for example, here they have a user. So notice how this is them setting up the schema. When they set up the schema, they're not actually writing SQL. See how there's no SQL here. This is a little example of SQLize. There's no SQL. Instead, they're writing JavaScript and that gets transformed uh, SQLize will transform that into a SQL statement for them. So it's taking this JavaScript object here and it's going to submit that, um, it's going to insert that into the table. That's what this user.create is happening right there. So they're creating a user table here, that's what this chunk of code is doing. And then here they're creating a, a user with this data. So it's just a faster way, um, an easier way if you're using um, JavaScript and ORMs are universal these they have them in every language um, it's a fast way to take you know your object that you have in JavaScript and convert it to SQL and run it on you know create your objects and for example you don't have to take it so notice here how they're doing this dollar sign one text thing and they're like putting hello world here that's what it's doing um, you don't have to do any of that kind of replacement. Um, SQLize handles it for you, right? You don't have to put this inside of this. You don't have to build the query yourself. SQLize builds the query and does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Now, there's a big con to this too, though. So with SQLize, they give you a lot of power and do a lot for you, but you lose control. With Node Postgres and with any sort of one like this where you get direct access, you can write more efficient queries because um, you're writing the exact query, right? Um, this is also assuming you're good at uh, database stuff. If you're not good at database stuff, use um, an ORM will probably write better queries than you can. But there'll be some scenarios where um, SQLize might not write very good queries. Now, for the most part, it does. Um, and that's when it's you could use node postgres and the nice thing about sqlize is if you know something is not running well you can always do a one-off statement like this in sqlize like you can write sql and sqlize too but a lot of time you'll be using javascript but this is as you can see we're connecting to the database and you can you can basically control when you're connecting to the database when you're not connecting uh, how many threads you have open and all that stuff and you don't do as much of that stuff in sqlize you can but you, you're pretty much, you know, this is what your code looks like. You're creating objects, um, and you're not dealing as much with the uh, lower level stuff that this is. So this is more work, but you can, uh, you know, SQLize does a little bit more heavy lifting for you, but you pay for that. And one, it could be a little slower and a little bit more heavyweight. But it, development speed is a huge increase with SQLize compared to those. Now, SQLize is not the only ORM. It's the one I'm using, but I'm actually not a huge fan of it. And there's two other ones that I heard that are decent that I want to check out soon. The first is called Nex, and the second is Bookshelf. And I believe Bookshelf, it says it's built on Nex, so it should be very similar. Uh, I don't know really the differences between the two, um, but they have a little more uh, different syntax than how SQLize does it. Um, so I want to try that out so you can see what it looks like here connecting to the database it looks a little bit different their code than sequelizes so these are two to check out as well if you are looking for an ORM in JavaScript 
Um, currently using this, this is like the most popular one. Um, and there's just a lot of good information out there if you want to learn SQLize and build stuff with it. So I'm using SQLize over Node Postgres because I like the development speed. Um, that's just, if, if I find that SQLize is doing something slow, I can always write my own query. Um, they have a command that lets you do a raw query like this. So you kind of get best of both worlds. I can write code really fast um, with SQLize, and if I need to write a query myself, I can too. So that's kind of the different ways you can write SQL statements and communicate with your database from your Express server. But as I was saying, these are these are the JavaScript specific, but there's going to be ones for this for every language. If you're using Python, using Django, there's going to be different ones. If you're using Ruby on Rails, Elixir, all those different backends, they'll have this exact same options for you to choose from in ORM or writing the queries yourselves. And there'll be bunches of different ORMs you can choose from. So I would recommend using ORM because it's just the development speed it gives you. You can code stuff done, get done a lot faster. So that's what I would say on that. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.